Hey guys, welcome back to the Letterbox Workshop vlog. Back in the workshop today, we're working on the Honda CB750 build, and in today's episode, we're gonna be refurbishing those manky old brake calipers. Stay tuned. So guys, when I got the bike up and running again, I started to push it out of the workshop to get it back on the road and the brakes were just seized solid. The pads were constantly rubbing on the discs, they were binding. I got a little bit of movement when I was on the levers, but not much at all, certainly not enough to get me out on the roads. So I watched a few videos and I decided the only way I was really gonna fix this was to strip the calipers down, put new seals all the way around in, to bleed all the hydraulics and give it all a bloody good clean all the way through. So what you'll tend to find is with time, the hydraulic fluid in the brakes, the braking fluid I should say, it gets all crusty. I'm not sure if it's water's getting into it or nutrients or salt from the roads or quite what it is. But basically in the brake caliper you have a piston which is what moves up and down and applies pressure onto your brake pads, creates friction with your disc and slows your bike down. Now over time those pistons don't move quite as smoothly as they should do before. In fact, mine had just completely seized. They weren't moving at all. So on the CB, the front brake calipers each have two pistons, and on my particular bike, there's one on each side, and the back wheel has a single caliper, but again with two pistons. So in all, we've got six pistons that we're gonna rebuild in this video. So for simplicity, this is a cross section through one piston in the brake caliper. Within this, you've got the piston itself, and then you've got two small rubber O-rings at the top end. Now this is where the problem was on my bike. A load of gunk had got in behind those, was putting way too much pressure on the seals, putting way too much pressure on the pistons, which then meant there was so much friction it just couldn't move. So the first step is to strip the calipers down in their entirety. You want to take every last nut, bolt, washer, seal off the brake calipers. First of all, I gave my brake calipers a really good wash. Just a bit of degreaser just to get rid of the worst of the road dirt and the worst of the oil that was all over these calipers. Once I'd done that, it was a liberal coating of paint stripper. There's a lot of old, manky, chipped, scuffed black paint on mine that I wanted to get rid of. Once all the paint was removed, I went around all the small corners with Dremels, just getting the last little bits of paint out. There's some really tight little corners that the paint remover really does not get into. So using the Dremel is fantastic because you can get into these really, really, really easily. I used these small uh, wire wheels on my Dremel. They worked absolutely fantastically. I can highly recommend those. Next up, the whole caliper, all the parts of it went into an ultrasonic cleaner. I put them on about 60 degrees Celsius. I think I did probably about an hour on each just to get the worst of the gunk off. Once I'd done that, it was a case of repainting the calipers. Now guys, the hammerite that I used for this, I would not recommend. Now admittedly, I'm in this workshop. It's pretty cold in here, even in the middle of summer. But nonetheless, I just found the hammerite chipped off way too easily. I read all sorts of threads about whether to use very high temperature paint, whether to use hammerite. All I can say is I would advise against a brush applied hammerite because for me, it didn't really work. And to be honest, I'm probably gonna end up stripping these down again to get them powder coated. So have a look at your options. Powder coating, I imagine, would be a good way of doing it. Just don't go with hammerite.
box is all repainted, it's a case of reassembling back the way you came. Now on these particular brakes, the only bits that I really replaced were the rubber seals and the hydraulic fluid itself. So with the new ones in, they work like an absolute dream. They've been on the bike now while I've moved it around the workshop here and they're really effective, no binding at all. They move back to the original position after you've applied pressure. It's really good. So by far and a long way, the most challenging task I had to do on these brake calipers was removing the two pistons. Now, there's all sorts of ways of doing this. I'll chuck up a few links below to some good methodology. Basically, a lot of people say you can use compressed air to do it. I don't have an air compressor. That was gonna be expensive and it's really bloody dangerous. So make sure you read up on that before you do it. Some people say you can pump grease in. That puts pressure on the back. Weirdly, I don't have a grease gun, so that option was out for me. Some people say you can use the opposing pliers to get in there, get really good grip and shake it out. I bought a pair. They were about 20 quid, $30. They were absolute junk. The edges where you've got friction on it, just ground down straight away. I really recommend you don't use them. Here's my top tip on how to do it. So first of all, you want to remove the caliper entirely from the bike, but leave it attached to the brake line still. Now when a piston pushes out, there is no mechanism that pulls it back in. The pressure from the pad pushes it back in as it moves around the rotor. If you just pump that, you're going to get the piston coming out all the way. So if you've got a single piston in your calipers, just pump it with a little bit of brake fluid in it eventually it'll pop out. Now brake fluid is horrible stuff, make sure you've got eye protection on. If like me you've got two piston calipers this is a little bit more difficult. You're rebuilding these because they're gunked up. There's always going to be one piston which is worse than the other. So if you pump on the brake you're going to get one piston coming out and the other is going to stay exactly where it is and it is a real pain in the ass. Trust me on this. My technique, pump it until you've got one piston almost all the way out, within a couple of millimetres of coming all the way out. Once you've got it to that position, you want to put a small piece of steel or a piece of wood or even plastic would be sufficient to stop that particular piston moving any further. Then when you apply pressure on the brakes, it can't go any further. It is jammed solid. Then you can push away and the one that was previously seized solid, that will push out. Ideally, keep pushing until the seized piston is entirely out. It'll go through a bit of a pop. Then once you've done that, you can remove the piece of metal holding the original piston in place and just simply pull it out of your hands. It should be fairly easy to do by that point. That's how I found. If you've done this yourself and you've got a better technique for doing this, please do shoot me a comment below. If you've got your own videos on how to do caliper rebuilds, you can better post up a link below so that other people can benefit from them. But that was my technique for it. Once you've rebuilt it, it's a simple case of fixing the caliper back onto the bike, putting the pads all back on it, connecting up the hydraulics again, putting some brake fluid into your reservoir and pumping it through. Now, there's loads of videos out there on how to bleed a brake system. If you're not familiar with it, watch some of those, it's dead easy. But one tool I would say is essential for this task is a one-way valve or a non-return valve or a brake bleed kit, call it what you will. Basically, a small section of hose with a valve in it that lets the brake fluid go one way as you push the brakes, but when you release it, it doesn't let it come back up. What this means is as you're pushing, the liquid comes out and it keeps coming out. All those little bubbles that are in the system, bubbles there, they're gonna come out with it and that non-return valve is gonna stop them getting sucked in. Once you've pumped it and you're happy that all of the air is out, I found it took a couple of reservoirs full of fluid until I was confident. Once you've got there, you can just tighten up the bleed valve again, remove your one-way valve, Bob's your uncle, it should work a treat. I'll chuck a link up below to the sort of tool I'm talking about on eBay, literally three or four pounds, four or five dollars, something of that order. So that's about it, guys. As I say in the video, I'm probably gonna do this again. I'm probably gonna get powder coated to go with the overall color scheme of the bike, but just for the minute, just so I can move the bike around the workshop without it seizing on. 
this has been really, really worthwhile. If you've enjoyed the video, please do hit that like button. It really, really helps. If you want to see the progress on this beautiful CB750 build, then please do hit that subscribe button down below so that you're notified as soon as a new video is uploaded. I promise it won't be as long to wait as it was on this particular video. Next video is either going to be carburetor removal, it might be engine removal, it might be the strip down of the bike, it might be the wheel refurbishment, it might be the welding on the frame, whatever it is, it's going to be a big one. You don't want to miss it. Hit that subscribe button and I will see you very, very soon. So guys, one last thing I forgot to mention in the video. As I speak to you now, I think we're approaching 700 subscribers, which is a crazy number for a channel that I will freely admit I don't upload to as much as I should. Nonetheless, we've got big ambitions for this channel. We've got new bike builds coming and this bike is getting there. We're not anywhere near Classic Octane, Jish, Cafe Racer Garage, Tulsa Motor Club, For the Bold, any of these guys yet. But when we hit a thousand, my promise to you is that we will have a competition. It will be some real parts, built well stuff, rental stuff, really good quality parts that you want on your bike. If you're interested in that, please do hit that subscribe button down below. The more people that subscribe, the quicker that will happen and it will be a subscribers only competition. So please do hit that button. Cheers.